Hey Dream Team, Eric Gephardt here. Summer's upon us, the daffodils are starting to pop up, layers are starting to come off. You start thinking about being around family and friends. Now it's time to take a look at your backyard and say, do I have the right grill? I want to introduce you to two of the front runners in the game today. This bad boy here is the Kamada Joe. And here to my right, the Traeger Grill. I gotta be honest with you, I'm seeing some trends. Big, bold flavor. Chemicals and gas are out, wood-fired flavor is in. Let's take a look and dive right into the Kamada Joe. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up on some of the points of differentiation. Obviously, it's a Kamado style grill, it's ceramic. All right, this is thick grade, top quality ceramic. Let's look at the bottom here. This is known as the draft door. This is where you make your big temperature changes. So this whole thing is based on airflow. It's kind of like a kind of like a heat pump. It's sucking in cold air, creating convection and kicking out hot. This is the ash drawer. Very easy to clean out the ash. Okay, we just take this bad boy, put it in a little flower pot with some sand in the bottom, boom, you're ready to go. Check out this beautiful quality made durable hardware on the exterior, really nice stuff, top of the line. That leads me to the clasp here. We've got a clasp so that we can keep that seal and keep that smoke and heat and moisture inside the chamber here. But look at this beautiful gasket. This is the same stuff you're gonna find in top quality ovens, something that nobody else really has in our industry. Look at this. This is a game changer, folks. I'm able to do this. This is an airlift hinge, so no longer are we worried about this big old heavy lid coming and slamming down on us. Uh, a, it's safe. B, it's fun. Check out the top on this thing, the top vent or the control tower. A lot of versatility in this. Notice when we were playing around with the hinge that the top didn't slide around. Essentially, this is your thermostat. So the fact that we're able to open and close this without changing our thermostat is a great thing. A lot of the other grills in this category, that's not the case. Notice how you can dial it in to wherever you want. You can also flip this completely open and get maximum airflow. Also, the top pops right off. Now we're able to get maximum airflow. This is also a great way to clean it. One of the things I really like about Kamado Joe is the versatility. It's just uncomparable. They continue to come out and innovate with new cooking surfaces, uh, different things to make it fun to cook with. Check this out, the grill actually comes with this divide and conquer system. You can see how I've got it set up with two different grill grates, half moon grill grates, but they're set on different levels. Uh, a lot of the accessories come in a half moon shape such that you can fit them at different levels and sort of play around uh, with the fire or direct, indirect. You can make amazing pizzas. I usually like to do about 550, maybe 650 degrees for a pizza, a little bit higher than the Traeger will actually go. So folks, we just looked at some of the points of differentiation with the Kamada Joe that make it such a unique experience. Let's go ahead and kick over the Traeger and take a closer look. You've got the hopper, which you then pour the pellets into. They're carried by an auger to a fire pot. There's a hot rod in there. That hot rod then ignites the pellets and then there's a fan that blows that smoke and keeps that temperature rolling, a little bit of convection going on inside of this. Feels like kind of a, a thin uh, steel that it's made out of. You've got the digital thermostat over here uh, where you're able to keep it dialed in and it's gonna stay there. You're not interacting with any flames. Uh, it's kind of the easy bake of outdoor ovens and grills. Uh, once we open this up, You'll notice that we've got a tray lined with aluminum foil. That's where all the drippings fall onto. Then they run right out the other end into a little bucket and are collected there where you can, uh, where you can get rid of them. Let's take a look at the fuel source. When you're cooking with this stuff, you just can't replicate the flavor. Imagine cooking a steak as the fat is rendering out, the drippings are hitting that natural lump charcoal, caramelizing and that sweet smoke comes up and envelops the meat. You just can't do that with any other fuel source. You put in great quality, you get out great quality. Traeger offers pellets from different wood sources, but there's a clear difference. 
The lump charcoal from Kumada Joe accentuates the flavor of the food, allowing you the option to treat smoke as a seasoning. You can add wood chunks from a variety of different fruit and hardwoods as you see fit. So we've got about six or seven pieces of natural lump charcoal in the firebox right now. You don't really want to add too much. These things burn so ergonomically, you just need a couple of big pieces in there, push them to the back. That way you've got good airflow, just enough charcoal, and we're ready to rock for 12 hours at a low temperature or a little less time if you're going fast and furious. So we just took a look at the fuel sources for both grills. Let's go ahead and get the Traeger started up. Not only do we need pellets, but we also need electricity. All right, so the Traeger's plugged in, the hopper is full of pellets. First thing we need to do to get this thing started now is leave this open. All right, we've got our door open. We're gonna go down to the thermostat, make sure we're on the smoke setting, and we're gonna flip this on. You can hear that convection blower humming right now. I don't see any flames, but you're not going to. Uh, so we'll give it about four minutes, shut the lid. We should see that thermostat temperature climb up. At that point, we're gonna turn it to 250. We've got our KJ rolling. We're gonna get that to about 250 on the nose. And then we're gonna throw some pork butts on there, check back in with you in about seven hours. I'm noticing that the Traeger is losing a lot of smoke and heat from all over whereas the gasket on the KJ is doing its job, allowing the smoke to travel over the food and on its way out the control tower. All right, it's been long enough. I'm smelling some fantastic flavors. Let's go ahead and open these babies up and check out those pork butts. <laughs> fantastic. Looking good. Let's see how tender it is. It's got good wobble to it. It's got a nice bark going on here. Let's see. <laughs> yep. And I love that horn right there. Good smoke ring to it. But that is beautiful. I'm gonna try both of these and see if there's a discernible difference between the hickory and the, uh, and the pellets that we were using. Wow. Let's check this out. Good color. Bone pulling right out. Good smoke ring. Let's give it a taste. Very nice. So both grills are excelling at low and slow. So what I wanna do next, we're gonna put it to the test. We're gonna put some big old thick cowboy steaks on there, keep them low and slow till they're about an internal temperature of 120, and then we're gonna reverse sear them. We're gonna crank the temperature up on both these babies. Remember the Traeger is limited to 450 degrees, so we're gonna crank this all the way and see if we can get it a little hotter than that. We're gonna take the KJ maybe seven, eight, 900 degrees and get that big old beautiful sear, that Maillard reaction, that caramelization that we're looking for. Um, let's put them to the test. Team Cowboy steaks are off. They're both resting at a beautiful 120 degrees Fahrenheit. We're cranking up the temperature now. Let me show you how to do that on the Kamada Joe. Open the draft door, open the daisy wheel. Temperature's rising up. By the way, I did take those deflector shields out, so we just got fire rip roaring and ready to go. We're ready for direct grilling. Now I'm gonna come over here to the Traeger, crank her all the way up to high. That's 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. 
notice the two steaks. Unbelievable caramelization on the Kamada Joe steak, and the Traeger just isn't able to keep up with the higher temperatures. It's good on the low and slow, but just not able to get that big, bold sear that we see from the Kamada Joe. Let's slice these babies up and take a taste. Okay, let's slice into the KJ steak. Yahtzee, there it is. There's that big, bold caramelization I'm looking for in a steak. You know, that Ruth Chris style sear. I guess the only drawback is you'll never go to your local steakhouse again and look at steaks the same way. That's beautiful. All right, folks, temperatures are up on the grills. We've gone to the local markets and got a smorgasbord of deliciousness. Uh, we're gonna break this up evenly between the two grills. We've talked a lot about versatility. Let's see it in action. The hands-off cord-connected Traeger is more like an outdoor oven. It's just not scratching that primal itch. I tip my hat to Kamada Joe. The interaction with the live fire and options of multiple cooking surfaces just pumps me up. For those of you who like cooking on live fire but want that Traeger convenience, Kamada Joe is bringing to you the I command. You put this baby on your grill, push a button, and you're from zero to 600 within 10 minutes ready to cook. So you come home on a Wednesday at 6.30 and you think, oh my gosh, boom, you just get it going. For those long cooks, you've got remote access to watch the progress of your grilling. You got charts, you've got alerts, you've got all that great stuff. So uh, check out the I Command, it's really, really unique. Folks, thanks for hanging out today. This was a lot of fun. Again, my name's Eric Gephardt. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Happy grilling.